Constitutional Convention met in May of 1787 in Philadelphia, and the delegates came together originally to try and improve or amend the original Articles of Confederation. Uh, as the delegates began to discuss the problems within the articles and what they needed to do, they saw that it would be much easier if they just threw out the articles altogether and started from scratch. And so the debate began of, over how exactly the national government was going to be organized. And there were two main ideas or two main plans that were developed, which the delegates either gravitated to one or the other. And that's where the huge debate came from. The first is the Virginia plan that was begun by Edmund Randolph, who was the one of the delegates from Virginia, hence the name. And according to the Virginia plan, the national government in his eyes would definitely be sovereign, right? Which meant that the central government, the national government would definitely have more power than the state's government. This due to the fact of how we saw with such a weak national government as within the articles, too much of the states had way too much independence from one another. And so Randolph saw that there needed to be a central government that was a lot stronger than it was before. As for the National Congress, he envisioned a bicameral legislature, right, with two houses where representatives would be determined, determined, um, determined by the population of each state. Now, the Virginia plan was well liked by the large states, but the small states kind of feared that the large states would have too much power under this plan because since they had a smaller population, they feared that they would never have enough representation in the government and their voice would never be heard. So the second plan then came from William Patterson, who was from New Jersey. And according to the New Jersey plan, instead of a bicameral legislature, it would be a unicameral legislature like we saw in the, under the articles where each state had an equal number of votes. The federal government could tax the citizens in all of the states and the federal government could regulate commerce. So under the New Jersey plan, the federal government would have more power than in the original articles, but still would not be completely sovereign as within the proposal of the Virginia plan. So debate continued on from either side until we come to what's known as the Great Compromise from Roger Sherman, who was the delegate from Connecticut, and it's known as the Connecticut Plan. And Sherman then took a little bit of both plans. He created a bicameral legislature, proposed that one of the houses then would be dependent on population, which would be the House of Representatives, right? And one of the houses would then be equal representation, which ends up being the Senate, where every state has two representatives despite their size. This is known as the Great Compromise, right? The Connecticut Plan is also known as the Great Compromise because this is the final um, decision that the delegates actually do agree upon about having this bicameral legislature where we have one house with population and one house that's equal. And that way, each side, large and small states, would still have a voice within the government and it would ensure that all sides would be heard. One of the other major issues that had a lot of controversy and there was a lot of debate over was the issue of slavery and how they were going to address slavery in the Constitution and in this new government. The Southern states wanted a system where slaves would then count in terms of representation that they would have in the government, uh, but not in regards to taxation. So they wouldn't be taxed for their slaves because technically they were property and property is taxed. The North, on the other hand, argued that if slaves were considered property, then they should be taxed in terms of property, but they should not be counted in terms of representation. And so entered another compromise, which is known as a three-fifths compromise, in which slaves would then count as three-fifths of a person, All right? So for every five people, Right, slaves would count for three of them. And that's how they determined how slaves would count in terms of both taxation and representation. Another compromise that was um, agreed upon in the writing of the Constitution was about the slave trade itself. And the delegates agreed that the topic of slave trading would then not be discussed until 1808 where they would allow the importing of slaves and it would not be restricted or abolished 
until 1808, where it would then come back to the table and they would decide what to do with it. So really the topic of slavery is one of these I didn't really want to tackle full on. In fact, in the Constitution, they don't even use the word slaves or slavery. They don't they wanted to stay away from that. So you have the term free persons and all other persons used instead but they really stay away from using slaves or slavery in the constitution. So it's definitely a topic that the delegates wanted to avoid at all costs in terms of creating the constitution because they didn't want to come to a place where there would not be any agreement and they really wanted to find a way to have everybody agree and create this constitution because a new government was needed for the United States.